Having a written legal will is important, but more than half of Aussie adults don't have one. Vision has entered into a partnership with SafeWill, a leading online will writing platform to provide you with an easier and more affordable way to write or update your will. As part of the Vision family, we want you to know about a way that you can write your will for free. Start the process now and complete it at no cost during Leave a Legacy Week from February 26 to March 3rd. See all the details at vision.org.au slash legacy. A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Our words are very powerful. They can be either hurtful or healing. They can build up or tear down. And with only one opportunity to make a meaningful difference in this world, we don't want to waste the opportunities we have. Joining us now, a guest who says our words leave a legacy for others in a hurting world. Joanne Bertelson is the author of seven books. Her latest is called Swan Song. Start creating your legacy of life-giving words today. Joanne Bertelson, a special welcome along to 2020. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Neil. Joanne, your book is called Swan Song. Let me ask you, what did you decide to approach in the way that you were writing this latest book? I I wanted to... Uh, write Swan Song to encourage others to think carefully about the words we speak and write on a daily basis so that when we do reach the time of our own Swan Song, if you like, or final farewell or end of our life, um, we, can, we can know that we have done our best to leave the, um, this unique life-giving legacy behind us that may still impact others when we're no longer here. Um, and in the process of writing that, I wanted to encourage us all to think about um, how God's words has impacted us in such a positive way and the words of others too, and how we can uh, mirror that or carry that on and speak that out into the lives of others as well while we have opportunity. Interesting, as you say, Swan Song is like the final farewell. Uh, but this is not your intention, isn't it? It's not uh, you're on your deathbed and therefore you're writing nice things about people trying to correct all the things maybe you said wrong over the years. This is something for people even of younger years to think about the sorts of ways that we frame the expressions and the attitudes and uh, all of those things that are descriptive about the people that we love, this is something that happens really from young years. That's right. And that's what um, my publisher, Authentic Media in the UK, was wanting to stress. Um, I had a slightly different subtitle uh, originally, but they said, no, let's go with Start Creating Your Legacy of Life-Giving Words Today. Because whatever age, um, we can all stop before we open our mouths, um, try to listen to God, listen to what God is wanting to say through us and, and, and be good listeners as well as good speakers. Uh, and then just take that moment to think, well, is this going to build up or is it going to tear down? Is it going to help this person or hinder? And we can all do that. Joanne, for a lot of Christians, when we start to think about words we use, uh, many will go to James chapter 3, which is full of all sorts of uh, issues around the tongue. Is this one of those important chapters that you can reflect on as we talk about a swan song? Absolutely. I do quote that in the book, and that's a good warning, those chapters in James. And I know there's uh, verses in Proverbs as well, that I was just reading one this morning in Proverbs 12:18, uh, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So um, that's that's another side to James's warnings too. So I think it's important that we take note of this and and uh, and really um, yeah make the positive impact rather than than hindering what God is doing in someone else's life, just for the sake of being a little more careful and of listening to God. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it, the sorts of analogies that are drawn there out of James. Uh, You know, your tongue is like a fire. 
uh, or yep. your tongue is like the rudder on a ship. Uh, just a little organ that does a lot of damage or, or steers in a way that can take you in a completely different direction. So the tongue, very powerful. Yes, that's right, Neil. And that is actually the joy of writing my book. Um, I have 12 different chapters in the book and they deal with all sorts of words, um, just words of empathy, encouragement, affirmation, challenge, forgiveness, comfort, peace, mercy, wisdom, insight, humility and love. And so I had opportunity to look at my own life and think about what were the words that really impacted me in a positive way uh, and spurred me on to become all God purposed me to be, um, but also what were the ones that really um, threw me at the time and, and did some damage and what did I learn from that and, and how did I uh, reap benefit from that and learn from that and not do that to someone else. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it was a good lesson to look at the different fires of words in my own life and be grateful to God again uh, 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 through you know all the journey He's taken me on. So. When you realise that your words have the power to build up or to tear down, uh, there's a choice involved here, isn't there? When you're looking through uh, issues to do with creating a legacy, somewhere or other you draw a line in the sand and you say, this is the way I'll use my words from this time forward. Uh, building up or tearing down, and we hope we might say we're going to build up those around us who we love. Yes, and, and that's it, you only have to think of your own life and think what were the things that affirmed and encouraged me. Um, and it's a bit of a mean spirit, isn't it, <laughs> if we don't want to pass that on to someone else. Um, so I think that's very important. I can think of, you know, I would not be doing what I'm doing today um, without these uh, different uh, pastors and friends and family members who've spoken into my life. Um, and so that's, I want to leave a positive legacy like that behind me too. So important yeah. are these words, and, and I guess you've got to make a conscious decision. I'm going to change the way I talk to and about uh, the people I love because, as you describe, giving life to others and encouraging people and enabling them to become all that God purposed them to be if you don't make the change, you actually may be working in a counterproductive sense and taking life from those we love or taking away those things that God might have purposed for them to be. You've got to be so careful. That's right. And in the book, I use many, many examples in the book from my own life and from uh, friends who were gracious enough to when I asked for permission to let me do that, um, some were happy for the, even to have their name in the book. Um, and, you know, I, I saw many ways, um, uh, you know, through that you can see the difference that the words make from these many examples. Uh, just one that comes to mind is uh, we used to have a neighbour where we lived and I would hear the dad call out, um, just call his little boy all sorts of names, you know, like you're useless, you're hopeless, you're an idiot. Um, yeah, thanks for doing that. You know, you'll never amount to anything. And that boy grew up to be a very angry, sullen boy. And my heart used to go out to him. There's nothing much we could do. You know, but on the other hand, I've had people who've spoken to around my life and said, oh, I think what you're doing is wonderful. You know, you go for what God's given you to do. And that just makes such a difference. One of your reviewers uh, said of your book, uh, this presents the essence of the good news of the gospel as we share and live out our lives in this world. There is a sense here, isn't there, that when we talk about the gospel and a life transformed, this has got to be one of those elements, hasn't it? The way we talk and uh, the power of our tongue. That's right. Yes, that was the principal of our theological college <laughs> who wrote those endorsements. And um and I actually use him as an example in the book of absolute humility, someone who spoke with so much humility. And so, yes, that's, that's exactly right. That um, what we do, you know, our words, they speak, they, uh, they're a mirror to other people of who God is, you know, and what this good news is about. And, and that's why I wanted us, I've got a lot of scripture in the book because I want us to look at the way Jesus spoke to others. And, and the way God has spoken to us all down through the centuries and and then to um to impart that through the words we say and not to not to bring um 
uh, not to uh, be harm to uh, God's name at all through the words that we speak. So yes, it's very important. Yeah, and that's right. It's the crux of the gospel. That's the good news, isn't it? And and that's what we speak and live every day. Um, and when you're and in the midst of a family about. environment too, Joanne, and uh, you know, you were talking about the neighbour uh, overhearing yeah. the harsh words spoken of a child. Mm. Uh, this is something, isn't mm-hmm. it, that uh, within our own family can become contagious. The way we speak to and about our own children. Uh, that can be caught by them, and they'll pick that up, that same virtue up as they grow up. That's right. That's a huge responsibility, isn't it? And we mind grandchildren here during the school holidays, and um, and often you know during term time as well. And I'm conscious of that. that the way we speak to each other, my husband and I, as well as the way we speak to them, you know, it can do such damage, or it can implant um, an image of God in their hearts that we don't know where that will lead in the future. And so it's a huge responsibility, isn't it? But it's a lovely thing that God can uh, God can just give us the words to say too. And Joanne, what's the difference between saying nice words or even uplift, uplifting words about uh, those who we love uh, and using God's words? Is there something special about the things that we can capture from our understanding of the scriptures that help to shape the way we speak about and to those that we love? Any thoughts here? Um, Well, nice words, I suppose you could say, are God's words too. But but I just think um, when we have God's spirit living in us, you know, and we can allow God's spirit to um, empower the words we say, to cover the words we say, as we have that listening ear to God as we go throughout our day. Um, you know, I just look, was looking at here in Ephesians this morning. It says, um, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs and it may benefit those who listen. And that whole Ephesians is talking about how we're filled with the Spirit to live our lives. So I think we're on the winner as Christians. Uh, we have God's Spirit in us. Um, and we just have to be aware of those gentle nudges to, you know, to close our mouths when we need to and to open our mouths when we need to as well. Um, and I have lots of parts in the book where I talk about, um, you know, being prepared to speak out um, as well. Um, even in um, a supermarket queue is one example I give. With a gentleman said to me, I said, oh, I better watch where I'm going because um, I was going to the checkout. And he said, oh, I've been trying to work out that for years. Do you know where you're going? And so immediately I sense this little touch from God in my heart saying, what are you going to say to this man? And so we launched into this conversation about God as I was going through the checkout. (laughs) So, you know, I think with God's spirit in us, we can grasp hold of these opportunities and just go for it. (laughs) And uh, wonderful to be able to reflect too on either those Proverbs and uh, we were talking about James chapter 3 Uh, tremendous wisdom in there and uh, this time of the year too good to be able to take stock and do a personal evaluation and say what would I change in my life and it might just be the words that we're using Uh, Joanne Bertelson's latest book is called Swan Song Start Creating Your Legacy of Life Giving Words Today Uh, you'll be able to get a a hold of Joanne's book Uh, simply go on to online booksellers and you'll be able to find Swan Song but you might like to visit Joanne's website, joannebertelson.com, joannebertelson.com. That's J-O hyphen Anne Bertelson, B-E-R-T-H-E-L-S-E-N.com. Joanne, thank you so much for taking some time to share these thoughts with listeners today on 2020. Thanks for having me, Neil. It's great. <laughs> Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.